Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and what time is it? Brick Haul O'Clock, with another package from Bricklink.com, and also a bonus small package from a subscriber, a very generous subscriber. Okay, I'll put Robin to one side, put this to one side, don't let me forget that. Here we go. And, yep, looks all right. Loads of loose bags, which I shall tip over here and go through one by one. In no particular order. Hmm. I really don't know what that is. I don't think I ordered that. I'm not even sure that's Lego. I think that just crept in somehow, but nonetheless, so there's that. And we've got some big pieces here. First of all, lots of yellow and red. Support pieces. Now I've got these because they're uh, five bricks tall and they're going to be really useful in uh, supporting my mezzanine layer behind my beach, which will have my boardwalk on, amongst other things. And these large bricks will also help with that set up. I'm going to need a lot of bricks to hold everything up so these are ideal and all those supports were very cheap 5p each so not bad and the fact that they're all bright bright colours really doesn't matter because we won't be able to see them. This is a very unusual piece you can see it's a pair of legs in black but with a 2x2 two two sort of brick connector on the top and at first glance, you'd think that wasn't Lego, but it is. I'll come back to that because that has got another piece somewhere else. Let's see if I can find it. Yep, it's in this bag. Uh -huh. Here's the top of this figure. You still don't think it's Lego, do you? It is. It is a Yeti from uh, Yeti's Hideout, set 7412, which is an old... Uh, adventure set, Orient Expedition, and it was um, 35p, so I thought, why not? It looks like you can put something in the ears, I don't know, like horns or something. Now, I need arms, as you might appreciate, and in fact, the legs that are supposed to go with this body are white, as you might imagine, him being a yeti, but I thought I'd get the black ones because they were just a few pennies uh, in the meantime, and that's a ridiculously large and weird uh, figure. And I bought it largely out of curiosity, more than anything else. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use it. Maybe my theme park, it could be a big sort of, um, or rather fairground. I'm not, not going to have it as a theme park. I'm going to have it as a fairground sort of traveller's sort of thing. Um, but nonetheless, they could maybe have a, a character that the kids know and like. I don't know. But um, yeah, pretty interesting, isn't it? It doesn't really look like Lego, I agree. A few more bits in this bag. Black cupboard, one of those, some flags. Oh, now this one's interesting. I haven't seen this before. It's sort of a one by four at the bottom, one by two at the top with sort of two curved uh, bits all in trans yellow. And what it is, is basically the front bumper of a car where it's got the sort of lights on each side. And you can put sort of one by two, uh, sort of like the number plate, sort of like, I'll just do it temporarily like that. And then it's sort of got the rest of the bumper like that. And it's basically a pair of headlights. Anyway, I've never seen that before. So I thought for a few pennies, I'd get that and see if I can modify one of my cars to accommodate it. Uh, milk carton. I think that one's supposed to be a milk carton as well, but it isn't. So that's a minor problem, isn't it? Um, and that's to help populate my supermarket when we get there. Uh, oh, I've got a few more of these pieces, the sort of slope pieces, but with the slope going in three directions in old grey. So I've got four of those. Now I'm going to, I buy these whenever I see them because um, certain bits of my castle, Brick Nottingham Castle, have got these on the top of the uh, turrets. And I really like that on the sort of um, crenulated edge. 
Uh, if you don't know what crenulator means, it's the bit that sort of goes like that. Um, and one day I might get enough to do all the crenulations with one of these on the top because it does look a lot better, I think. Um, but in old grey, they're quite hard to come by. So there's four more anyway. What else we got? A few sticker pieces in here. This is the grill from the red tractor. I've got the red tractor and I've got the sticker, but I thought um, if I make another uh, farm vehicle, then I could use that corn, ear of corn sort of logo on it. A tread plate sticker, this time on a two by four. I'll probably move that using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, and then use the two by four probably one of my subway stops or something like that. Uh, quite an interesting sort of number plate and stripes and things like that. A crosswalk uh, or zebra crossing sign, always useful. I want to have one of those on each side of the road wherever I've got a pedestrian crossing. Great big tower of those. So as, uh, and some stickers. So as uh, people know from watching past hauls, I use these generally with some, however many bricks I need in between them as supports between tables. So uh, if I need to hold one table up a little bit from another, I use a pair of these. So they're really cheap, nice and big and very useful. So there's loads of those. Oh look, I need one of those for my uh, main railway station. So it's another sticker piece with the train's logo on. And in here, these were amazingly priced. So it's, how many was it? Two, three, three, four, four. Four sticker sheets from set 60060, which you can see from the number plate. Um, and this was the auto transporter. Uh, and I've got that set, but what I really liked was the clipboard. I know it's got pictures of cars on it, but nonetheless, that clipboard is a pretty good one. And I can use that in all sorts of uh, scenarios or science labs, or I actually needed a clipboard for uh, Mrs. Hood doing her uh, tour guide job. So I think having a few more of those would be grand. And um, each one of those was very cheap at nine pence for the whole sheet. So who knows if I'll be able to use the grill or the number plates as well. Probably not actually, because they're probably all on the cars in that actual set, but I would pay nine pence just for the clipboard. What else we got? A bag of bags. Got lots of one by two by five bricks in red. These are nice and shiny. They're either new or not very used. And I'm gonna use these for a uh, facade building. I think I've nearly got all the pieces for this facade. So it'll be a very skinny and tall red facade building that will go next to my black office tower. Now I've got two more planned on that back wall uh, to get slightly nearer to the Vestas wind turbine. Um, I'm also planning some more on the back wall that the um, castle's on as well, but I haven't got very advanced with those yet. Uh, brown rod, I don't know why I got that bar. Now this is a uh, Interesting hairpiece. Obviously, this is from uh, Harley Quinn, uh, the Batman character, but I didn't have it, so I thought some goth chick or something like that could have this funky dyed black and red hair. Lots of lime bits and bobs. Oh, an absolute ton of these. Grey. These were probably all cheap, which is why I bought them. One by one, modified brick with one stud on the side. These are just really useful, so I'll always get those. They're either great for when you don't need to worry about what colour or grey. If it's underneath the sea or something and I want to do rocks, I mean, one idea was to have like a rock wall with loads of fish swimming near it. So if you want to attach fish to a wall, you probably need to use some sort of uh, bar piece with a grabber on, and then you can attach them to the wall using those. So they're very versatile, very useful. Here's a minifigure, he's in bits, so he's probably new. If he's not, I'll give him a wash first, but he's just a businessman. But if I see a good minifigure for about a pound, 
and he's as good as bought because it's amazing just how many minifigures you need to populate a city of the size that I'm going for. So, good. Ah, now, lots and lots of plates in tan and in medium blue. This is basically for my beach, and I haven't got it um, completely planned at all, but I know that essentially I'm going to need lots of tan coloured for the sand, and then the next layer into the sea uh, to represent the sort of shallower water and crashing waves, I'm going to use medium blue because I like the colour. So getting as many sort of cost-effective small pieces so I can make sort of interesting shapes and uh, things to sort of approximate a shoreline, the better. So that's what they're for. Can't remember why I got those. Then we've got another bag of these. These are clearly used because they're dirty, but they'll clean up no problem. Now these are the pieces. Oh, I've got a load of them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. These are the pieces that I use to make my black and green um, skyscraper. But I don't need them for that. I just bought them because they were two pence each and they're very big and I'm going to use them in the same way that I'm going to use these sort of bricks um, basically to hold up and support all my mezzanine layers because this mezzanine layer is going to be much like the marina but on the other side of Brick Bay uh, behind the beach but it's going to have to be even more robust than the marina side because it's actually going to have modulars on it as part of it and they're quite heavy so I can't have just a few of these holding up modulars because they'll all snap or warp or the, it'll all start bending or God knows what. So I'm getting as many strong bricks as I can to make a real firm base. So put all those back there. Oop. Right, some loose, some not. So I've got an absolute load of cheap 2x4 in dark grey, dark bluish grey, because uh, I need these for the ballast for my railway line. When I did the last section, I realised how low I was getting on the elements I need for ballast, and you need four of these to go in between the track pieces for every single piece of straight track. So, um, yeah, unsurprisingly, you get through quite a few of those. Yellow bricks, can't remember, they must have been really cheap. Maybe I'm using those for support as well. Not sure, if I'm completely honest with you. Now this was one of the main reasons for the order. And great, they're in great condition. Two more of the printed subway station tiles. So as you'll all probably know, having watched my subway videos, I'm using two of these, one facing sort of each way, on my subway entrances. And I want to have four of those around my city, at least, anyway. Four to start with. So I'm going to need eight of these tiles. And I've got about, I don't know, six or seven so far. So those, including these. So um, those are very, very important. This, is this printed or stickered? Oh, it's printed. This uh, is just a one by two with a little sort of clasp on it. And it's actually um, the front grille from a car. Uh, in a car's set, that's 9483 Agent Mater's Escape. But I'm not going to use it as that. I thought it looked quite like a, a lady's handbag or sort of clutch handbag anyway. So I thought I could just give that to a minifigure to sort of carry around. Let's give it to this gent, have a man bag temporarily. I just thought if somebody was carrying that around, that would look about right, I think. Very fetching indeed. So there we go. And another printed piece is some cereal. A nice sort of wheat logo and some exclamation marks. Uh, and that's from the supermarket suitcase set, 10684. That's a junior set. I think it was also in the Ghostbusters uh, firehouse as well. But that's really nice. You can get that on bricks and pieces, but uh, obviously it was a bit more cost effective to do it via BrickLink. So um, that's good. That'll also be alongside the milk in my supermarket when I get that done. I've got 
quite advanced with my plans on the supermarket, but um, <laughs> it's taking a while to get it exactly right how I want it. So uh, don't hold your breath on that one. More bright bits. Uh, these are these sort of ridged round two by twos in uh, brown. I was thinking of using these for furniture, for sort of tables and things like that somewhere because as soon as you run low out of useful colours, uh, it's very hard to make any furniture at all. Ah, now these are nice and cheap, but are trans... I don't know if they're what they were supposed to be originally. Flower pieces or something? Anyway, I thought I would use them as some sort of coral... for a sort of underneath the sea scene. Uh, just by stacking them like this. You can imagine in a very sort of rich under the sea type area. You might have two of these or three of them or whatever. So I think they look quite good actually. And then these. Now these are even more interesting. I've not seen these before. So these are sort of almost like egg cups really, aren't they? Um, but you can fit two of them together, I believe. Yeah, there we go. To make a hole. So it's actually got anti-studs on both ends. And you can see it's got this lovely trans purple with these hexagons sort of irregularly around it. And um, they're basically alien pods uh, from many of the Galaxy Squad sets, uh, including 70709, Galactic Titan. And I just thought they kind of reminded me of the film Alien, or Aliens. Uh, where there might be a nasty creature in them. So in one of my sort of hidden Easter egg areas, maybe I'll have some horrible aliens waiting to erupt. Who knows? And I can see the next part of that magic plan in that I bought two nasty monsters. Oh, they're still in their original plastic. Oh, well, I'll take them out. Now, as many of you will instantly know what this is, this is Krang. It's good to know it's definitely new, isn't it? Because it's sealed in plastic. So this is Krang from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, recently I got a Krang sort of inside a sort of minifigure's stomach, sort of in, in an actual minifigure. So I won't use this as a Krang, but it looks like a pretty nasty uh, bug, doesn't it? And my thought was, because I knew it was a bit bendy, if I put him in there, you can't really see him, can you? Maybe I could light it somehow. But you can get the suggestion he's in there. Ugh, that looks awful, doesn't it? In a good way. So that was my thought. I could get two Krangs and two of these alien pods and make something really horrid. <laughs> There we go, how about that? So I've just got to work out where in my city, which might be somewhere that we haven't even built yet, that's going to go. So let's not forget we've got that. Then also from that bag, there was two heads. And I think these are glow in the dark. Uh, there seems to be a bit, let me hold them up to my filming light for a second. So glowing yeah it might be anyway these are the same but they're just two-sided and they are heads from the soldiers of the dead from uh, Lord of the Rings set 79008 pirate ship ambush and I thought they could represent two very ill people in my hospital so when I get round to doing my hospital I've been buying any head that doesn't necessarily have to follow my yellow skin only rules because um, they're very, very badly ill. I mean, gosh, imagine you look like that. So they've obviously caught something absolutely disgusting and um, are therefore in hospital with very good reason. So that's the thinking there. Now I've got 
another one of those, but in dark tan, and some wedge plates in dark tan. As I said before, I use these to make paths, so I'm going to make paths, uh, odd shaped paths, in my fairground when we get there. Then more printed. Uh, a couple more milks. So milk, milk. And these, now I think, oh, I forget where these are from. Were they, they're they from that Doctor Who TARDIS idea set, I think, aren't they? Um, now they seem to be, I don't know if it's like the sands of time or what they're supposed to actually represent. I don't really follow Doctor Who. But I thought, from distance at least, it almost looks like a sort of Petri dish with um, some sort of microbial life in it or something like that. So I thought I could use them as sort of two things underneath microscopes in a uh, laboratory or something like that. So I got those just to play around with as well. Getting near the end now. I've got one more minifigure. Again, just generic. Looks brand new and I might sort of mix this up with other bits but at the moment it's just a man with a nice sort of what denim jacket baseball cap so very good green door grey bin mm, don't remember why I got that Lots of little wheels uh, for skateboards and things because I've got some skateboards that I bought recently that don't have wheels and there's a pair of purple ones as well so that'll be good. And a couple more bins. And then big grey bricks. A couple of car chassis bits. I thought about making my own cars and I don't have any spare vehicle bases. They were like 3p each so got them. And some long dark bluish grey bricks. I'm going to need a lot of those for building all my subway entrances, so got those. So there we go. That is the whole haul. I think it's a pretty good haul. Uh, the main bits that I'm excited about are these signs, so I can really get right on with doing another subway entrance. These ill person faces. These crang inside an alien pod. I've got to get some sort of light in there so it looks really, um, really spooky. So we'll play with that. Oh, and look, there's actually an axle hole in the end. So a light could go in there quite easily, actually. So that's really good. I'm a bit, I wouldn't say excited about the Yeti. Um, it's interesting. Uh, yeah, and, and the red bricks, because I want to get on with building that facade as well. So... Really, really good haul. Now, before we finish, we've still got this package, uh, which was sent by a subscriber who very generously sent me uh, something that I wasn't able to find on the picker minifigure wall in London. Let's check. Yep, there's just a bag. Oh, and a letter. Oh, wow, two. Two dogs. So first of all, these were the pieces that I couldn't find. Black Terrier dogs. Fantastic, because I've got the grey one, which is Toto, uh, the one that goes uh, with the Yellow Brick Road girl. What's her name? Dorothy. That's it. Went blank for a minute uh, in the recent minifigure series. That is very generous for somebody just to send me that with nothing in return. And I've got the white ones which come with the Dog Show winner minifigure. So to have some black ones as well because I really like dogs in real life. Uh, and I'm trying to get one of each of the dogs. So getting this black one, which isn't part of any set at all. It's unique to the collect, uh, sorry, uh, build a minifigure wall. So to get those is absolutely fantastic. So I'm actually more excited about these dogs than everything else we've unpacked so far. And here is the sig fig of the sender of these dogs, who is Robin Hull, who is Robin Space Hull, as 
a YouTube subscriber, but is also Robin Hull Builds on Instagram. And you'll recognize his uh, picture from this minifigure because um, it's exactly the same. There we go. So there he is in Pride of Place with the dogs. And let's read his letter. Dear Robin, as promised, enclosed are two dogs that I picked up from the Builder Minifig Tower at Leicester Square. That's in London, by the way. Also enclosed is Bob, my sig fig. Thanks for keeping us entertained with Robin Hood Bricks. It's a brilliant channel and one of my go-to channels. I see you live near Batman's house. How cool. Do they still have the stuffed giraffe? Best wishes, Robin. He's referring to uh, the famous Woolerton Hall, which was actually... Uh, uh, Wayne Manor in one of the Batman films. So uh, yes, the uh, house is still there and I believe the stuffed giraffe is still inside. So thanks very, very much, Robin. That's incredibly generous of you. And um, I will definitely put these to good use and put your mini sig fig in Pride of Place in Brick Nottingham. <laughs> So as always, thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be completing the loops of the railway track so we can get some trains running around Brick Nottingham. Awesome. See you then.